In this video series, we're going to implement the DeepQ learning algorithm with PyTorch and then train Flappy Bird with it. I'll show you my whole process from beginning to end. Here are the tentative topics. I may add some topics or change up the order. In this video, let's get our dev environment set up and get Flappy Bird installed. Oh, don't forget to subscribe and get notified when the next video becomes available. Let's get our environment set up. I'm at the Gymnasium website. For those of you who don't know, Gymnasium is a library of reinforcement learning environments that you can train. On the left side, I'm going over to the third party environments. There are two Flappy Bird environments to choose from. Let me hop into the first one. And I'm going to scroll down to the observation space. So this environment gives us back an image of the game which requires us to have a convolutional neural network in order to train this. That's much more complicated than what we're going to get into in this video. So let me go back and hop over to the second option. Let me scroll down to the state space. There are two options for the state space. One is LiDAR sensory information, which I'm not sure what to do with. But the second option basically tells us the position of the last pipe, the position of the next pipe, and where our player is. So using this information, we can easily feed it into a regular neural network to train the environment. So this is the environment that we're going to go with. Let me hop down to my start menu. I'm going to start typing Anaconda. So I am going to use uh, Miniconda as my package manager. You can use whatever you want. Let me create a new environment. Conda create 8-n and I will call this a uh, DQN environment. Okay, let me activate my environment. All right, my DQN environment has been activated. I'm going to install Python 3.1 so you can match the version that I have. Okay, while this is installing, let me go back to my Flappy Bird page and go down to the installation instructions. And uh, this is what I need. I'm going to copy it. Okay, Python is installed, which means I should have pip in my environment. So let me install Flappy Bird without the dollar sign. Now let me see uh, how to run the game. Let me copy this. Okay, it's installed. Let me paste this in. Uh, it keeps copying the dollar sign. Okay, let me see if it runs. All right, it's complaining about not having TensorFlow. So there's some dependency on TensorFlow. I'll just install that. Okay, TensorFlow is done. Let me try this again. All right, it ran. This actually says we can play the game. So let me give this a shot. I have actually never played Flappy Bird in my life. So let's see how I do. Oh my god. <laughs> I can't even get past the first pipe. Let's hope our reinforcement learning agent is better. Let me try this one more time. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Let's get to our uh, DeepQ network. I'm going to hop over to Visual Studio Code. And I have a empty folder open here. Let me create a new file. I'll call it agent.py. Hop back to the Flappy Bird page and copy the uh, usage. I'll just paste it in here. And let me try to run this, make sure it runs, and then we can go over the code. And I'm just going to select the environment that we just created. And it is called DQN environment. I'm just going to hit F5 and it should run this file. Cool. Okay. Okay. Let's see what the code is doing. We're importing the Flappy Bird environment. Any game that is compatible with Gymnasium will follow this uh, general pattern. The first thing we do is to create an instance of the Flappy Bird environment. We're passing in render mode human to render the game on the screen. 
and they have a custom parameter to turn on LiDAR or not. And since uh, I want to just use the position of the pipes and where the bird is, I'm going to turn off LiDAR. We'll call the reset function to initialize the environment. And inside this infinite loop, we're calling the sample function on this action space to get a random action. Let's go back to the website and look at what the action space is. So the action space, uh, we're going to get either a number of 0 or 1 from the sample function. 0 is for the bird to do nothing. 1 is for the bird to flap its wings and uh, try to fly up. So that's what sample is going to give back, 0 or 1. With the action, we'll pass it into the step function to execute that action. The step function will give us back the observation, what the next state is, how much reward we got from the last action. If the bird hit the ground or hit one of the pipes, we'll get terminated equal to true, otherwise it's false. The next parameter is not used. Info is just additional information you can use for debugging or something. And then if terminated, we'll exit the loop and close the environment. Let me put a breakpoint here and run it again. And then we can check what are actually being returned in these variables. Okay, I'm going to hit F5. Okay, the bird is here. I'm going to hit F10 to go to the next step. Let's see what action was chosen. Let me go over to the debug console action is 1, so the bird should flap its wings. And then I will execute the next line. Let's see what we get back in the observations. Let's go back to the web page to see what those numbers mean. Okay, so there are 12 parameters in option 2, and each one of the numbers here should correspond to one of these in the same order. And it looks like the numbers are normalized, maybe between negative 1 and 1. Let's see if we can see it. The 12 here tells us that we have 12 numbers in this array. They're floating point numbers between negative 1 and 1. So it is common to normalize the values to either 0, 1 or negative 1, 1 when training a neural network. So this is expected. Now what reward did we get? We got a reward of 0 0.1. Let's go back here. We got a reward of 0 0.1, means that we are still alive. We, are, we were able to take that action and did not die. So we got 0 0.1. When we pass through a pipe, we'll get a 1. When we die, we'll get a negative 1. And if we touch the top of the screen, so this is used to discourage the bird from keep going up. So that's how the reward system is set up. Okay, so I assume that we're not terminated though. So this loop is gonna keep going. All right, we don't need to go any further. Let me just stop it and then we can move on. Oh, before I move on, when coding up a uh, reinforcement learning algorithm ourselves, we should not try to train a complicated environment to begin with because we don't know if there are bugs in our code or is it just that this environment takes a really long time to train. So during coding, we want to test on a much simpler environment. Let me hop back to the gym page, go back to gymnasium page, go down to classic controls. So Codpole is one of the basic environments that uh, you might see a lot in examples. So let me copy the environment ID. I'll make a copy of this line. I'll just comment out Flappy Bird for now and I will change this to Codpole. Codpole doesn't have Use LiDAR. Let me take that out. Okay, remove the breakpoint. Hit F5. Let me put a breakpoint here so that we can see it again. Okay, here it is. Uh, in this environment, this black piece is supposed to be a cart that can move either left or right. And there's a pole that the cart is trying to balance. So the idea is for the cart to learn how to balance the pole. Okay. Now that our dev environment is ready, join me in the next video where we build the DeepQ network. If that video is available, it should have popped up by now. Otherwise, maybe check out one of my other reinforcement learning videos.